I'm at the bad guy for telling my sister-in-law I don't need her parenting advice as she clearly doesn't know what she's doing. Hello, I'm a female, 36. I have a beautiful baby boy. He is 10 months. He was croissant last Saturday. My twin and his wife flew in for the christening with my nieces. They live in another state. And I paid for their flight because they live with the modest income. And she is a stay-at-home mom. The day before christening, when they arrived, my son was crying. And we tried his usual self-soothing techniques, but he wouldn't stop. My sister-in-law said we should just give him his pacifier. I told her we don't use pacifiers and he's never tried one. Over the next few days, it was a similar rodeo. Baby cry, and we will use self-soothing techniques, and sister-in-law will mention how pacifiers will soothe him. Well, after the christening, upon her suggestion once again to give my crying son a pacifier, I snapped, and in a room full of friends and family, I said I will never take parenting advice from a 41-year-old woman that still lives with only her parents' property. Can I hold down a job so she's a stay-at-home mom? That my retired parents have to send money every month to help them make ends meet and whose five-year-old still uses a pacifier to soothe herself and proudly shows them off. A five-year-old whose mouth is so jagged and ruined that she and my brother will probably have to ask me and my husband for money for orthodontics care because they can't afford it. She is a prime example of what not to do in raising kids. Well, obviously, the room was silent and she ran off crying and she and my brother left. They only came back that evening, but she nor my brother said anything to me. They left the next day to the airport. My brother said I have to apologize and it was unfair of me to throw their finances in their faces. While I apologized for that, I said I would not apologize for telling her the fact about my niece's situation and I told him that on multiple occasions both I and my husband, he's a pediatrician, have warned them about the negative effect of a pacifier on a child. My brother told me to mind my own business and I said I gladly would as long as his wife minded hers. Now my parents are telling me to apologize again. Naturally, my friends are on my side. So, internet, am I the bad guy? Am I the bad guy for telling my sister she has no one but herself to blame for her daughter not wanting to see her? Hello, I'm Mel, 30. I have a sister, she's 32. So, my sister is a recovering heroin addict and has a 12-year-old daughter. She had already been an addict for a couple of years when she got pregnant and cut off most of the family when we didn't give her money. So, she was also on probation all the time. She ended up failing a drug test while pregnant and had her daughter taken at birth, literally at birth, she never even got to see her. I'll give her credit and say she cleaned up her act big time when that happened. She went to rehab, got a job and is now 12 years sober and living on her own. My niece ended up getting placed with a nice foster family who adopted her, but my sister got supervised visitation when she was four. Unsurprisingly, she had no attachment to my sister and saw her foster family as her real one. She still gets a few hours a weekend to see her, but by now my niece has gone from indifferent to annoying at having to spend 90 minutes every Saturday chatting with a stranger. She had now preferred not to see my sister again and she agreed to that. She's been beside herself for weeks now 
talking about how it feels like all her work was for nothing. And that it's like they took her away again. I reminded her that the girl has no attachment to her. And that's her fault for doing drugs while pregnant. She should have stayed clean. And it is us consequences of that mistake. She accused me of being unsympathetic. And said I have no idea what it's like to give birth. And never meet your baby again after that. Alone with some other insults. Our mother found out from her and said that while I was right, I didn't need to be said then now. So, write in the comments below what you think. I'm on the bad guy for ruining a proposal at the wedding. So, I'm a part-time DJ. I mostly DJ for just family and friends, I'm not really a professional, just do it for a little side cash from time to time. Last weekend, I got invited to DJ on a cheap other wedding for a friend of friend. At the wedding, while everyone was on the dance floor, one of the guests, we'll call him Kevin, approached me and asked if I could play the song Golden Hour. It was an odd request because at the time all the guests were literally hopping around and dancing, but I was told to make all requests, so I did it anyway. When I started playing, in the dance floor started to clean up and then Kevin invited the women onto the dance floor. They started slow dancing for a bit and a few people joined them, including the bride and groom. Then, at that one part of the song, Kevin got down on one knee and I knew right away that he was going to propose. I didn't think it was right, especially because they were in the middle of the dance floor with all eyes on them and I kind of feel like if this happens I will take the fall because I was the one to put on a romantic song out of nowhere. So instead of letting that happen, as soon as he pulled on the box and started to play boogie and turn up the volume instead, after that, Kevin just side-eyed me and got up and everyone else sat down. After that, nothing else really happened and the tension was very thick. After the wedding, no one really brought it up, so I obviously thought I wasn't the bad guy and the friend that was friend with the bride side that I wasn't. But then a branch of the family started to message me it turns out that the cabin was the bride's brother and the family kept asking why I did that. I told them that proposing at someone else's wedding was not appropriate. They told me that I shouldn't have an opinion because it was just the DJ and not Kevin got publicity humiliated because some people knew this was going to happen so... They were taking videos and live on Instagram so all their friends could see. I responded with, that will be made the newlyweds hurt. But then they came back with, it shouldn't have assumed that the bride didn't want that. That part got me thinking, because I was mostly communicating with the bride about arrangements and she was very chatty before the wedding, but after that, she kept giving me one more answer. So I assume she's mad at me. But then again, when she played me, she almost doubled the amount for what I was asking for with a generous tip. So I'm not sure if the bride actually knew I think she wouldn't tell me. Am I the bad guy for just assuming? Am I the bad guy for not sharing my inheritance with my sister since she's to be adopted? Hello, I'm male, I'm 30. I lost my mom when I was 5. Despite being so young, I had very vivid and treasured memories of my mom and did not take to my dad dating a year after her death well. My dad recognized that he knew this would be hard for me, but said that as the parent adult, he knew what was best, even if I don't seem that way at first. And that he had thanked me in the long run. Not long after that he married my stepmom Lucy 
And when I began to act out over it, my dad said that burdening alone was hard and that my sister Jessica needed a mom. My dad even got my material grandparents to tell me that everything will be fine and how I needed to be a good boy. That was enough to get me to behave during the wedding, but once Lucy moved in and started redecorating, I started acting out again. My dad had enough and just started punishing me whenever I act out of made Lucy upset as well. Excuse me, Jessica isn't acting out like this. And to be honest, Jessica was easily pleased and wasn't alive long enough to have the same attachment to our mom as I did. It really upset me when Jessica started calling Lucy mom, and it really ticked me off when Lucy started referring to me as her son. I always corrected if when she tried then around me. It got worse when I was eight, and Lucy had her own kids because then my dad and her started pushing for adoption. Jessica obviously had no problems with it, but I refused. My dad had my material grandparents coming again and tell me that adoption wouldn't be that bad, but I still refused. Lucy and my dad punished for adoption anyway, but thankfully the judge listened to my feelings in a private room and denied it. After that therapy starting, but it didn't last so, they also tried the since you don't want to be a part of this family, you don't get X or or you can come to Y. But I was too stubborn for that method to work on me. The only one who I felt was on my side was my paternal aunt who kept sticking up for me whenever she seen that Lucy and my dad were trying to do. So when I turned 18, I went straight to her. It was when I became a legal adult that my material grandparents confessed that they were never okay with the situation, but my dad threatened to keep me and my sister away if they didn't show support. I was furious, so furious that I had my surname legally changed to my mom's maiden name as I wanted nothing to do with my dad and only ever really talked to my paternal aunt. Fast forward to now, and my grandma has passed away, grandpa died in 2020. And according to their will, only their legal grandchildren, it's to split at $215,000 in her retains. And since Jessica is legally Lucy's daughter, all she got was a framed photo of my mom and a letter. Jessica doesn't think it's a fair and thinks I shall share, but I told her to get money from her legal grandparents. My aunt thinks I'm being a bit harsh, so am I the bad guy? Am I the bad guy for refusing to give my wife's family a large portion of her life insurance money? I lost my wife unexpectedly, and it has been one of the most difficult times in my life. She left me with $200,000 in life insurance and I used $20,000 of it to cover the funeral expenses. Now my wife family is demanding a large portion of the remaining life insurance money. Her parents want to use it to rebuild their home in Florida that was destroyed in a recent hurricane. The thing is, they didn't have insurance. So I don't think it's fair for me to cover the losses with the money that my wife left me. My wife's brother also wants a portion of the money to pay for his college tuition. While I sympathize with his situation, I don't think it's my responsibility to fund his education. My wife left this money to me for a reason and it's up to me to decide how to use it. When I told my wife's family that I couldn't give them the money they were asking for, they assumed me of being selfish and not caring about their situation. They said that my wife would have wanted them to have the money and that I was going against her wishes. I felt terrible for my wife's family, but I also have my own financial responsibilities. 
I have bills to pay and I want to make sure that I can take care of myself in the future. I don't want to put myself in a difficult financial situation by giving away a large portion of the life insurance money. This is an opportunity for me to pay off my debts and buy the dream home me and my wife always wanted. Maybe I'm being selfish, but I feel like I'm not in the wrong. Me and my wife never really discussed what to do with life insurance money other than the occasion joke of buying the dream house we wanted or a study one. I miss her so terribly. So, I'm not the bad guy for refusing to give my wife's family a large portion of her life insurance money. I'm not the bad guy for telling my husband my kids will not be supporting my stepson at sport games anymore. My husband and I have been married for six years and together for eight. He has a 15-year-old son, Lucas. Lucas' mom died when he was five years old. I came into our marriage with Brian, who is also 11, now and Miley, who is 9. Together, my husband and I have Alec, who is 5. So Brian and Miley are Lucas' stepsisters, and Alec is his half-brother. Lucas had this trinket box with a couple of small trinkets inside of it that his mom left for him when she died. He kept it in his room mostly, but he likes to sometimes walk around with it in his hand. I have always told my kids it's not theirs. They are not to touch it unless Lucas say they can, and they cannot pastor him about it. When we first got married, Molly was really fascinated with it and did want to touch it, but I nipped it in the bed since it was so special. Regarding the dynamic, Lucas is very closed off from me and the kids. I have always done my best to bond with him, but he is so withdraw around me and therapy, which we did when we first got married, did not get us into a path of being close, though I never expected to be his mom. And I don't want that considered. About a month ago, we are having a dinner and my husband cracked a joke that Lucas seemed to care more about the trinket box than us after Lucas refused to let Alec get a closer look at it. Lucas said very seriously that the box meant more than me and the kids and he would gladly try us to save the box if anything happened to it. My husband was shocked Lucas spoke so seriously and the girls got upset about it. Alec wasn't paying attention when it was said. My husband took Lucas aside to speak to him, and I spoke to the girls. They told me Lucas had said that before, that he would trade our lives to save his box. That we better hope he's never asked to save one of us over the box because the box will win. He said this to them on a few occasions over a period of time. They never told me because they didn't know how to bring it up. He told Alec the same as well. My husband said Lucas will need some therapy because he saw nothing wrong with saying that honestly. I told him he was saying it and more to the kids when we didn't overhear. My husband said therapy will get to the bottom of things. A few days later, Lucas is telling Brin that he would save his friends over the box but not her. I told my husband about it and he said it will be mentioned to the therapist. He had a consultation with one the next day. Lucas agreed that he didn't need therapy and just because he doesn't care about us or our lives doesn't mean that is something wrong with him. I told my husband that given Lucas' attitude toward the kids, they will no longer show up to cheer him on at any sport games or the like. My husband argued we are still a family. I told him my kids do not need to cheer on the boy who has told them to their faces multiplied times that their lives are meaningless to him. My husband thinks I am overreacting and I would be wrong to do this. 
So write in the comments below. What do you think?